Hello, fellow rebel capitalists. Hope you're well. I wanted to go over a quick story that came out yesterday. <clears throat> Josh just sent me. And this is regarding the Cerveza sickness. And it pretty much confirms what all of us already knew. But I think it's important because <clears throat> one of the reasons I was so opposed to the medicine mandates, we'll call them, is because it was obvious that natural immunity had just as great of an effect as the medicine. So why would you make it mandatory for people that already had the Cerveza sickness? That didn't make any sense. And since it didn't make any sense, my argument, as you guys know from watching my videos, was, hey, there, there's got to be an ulterior motive here. Because if the motive was simply health, then they would make an exception with the medicine mandates for people that already had the Cerveza sickness. And so, and if they're not being intellectually honest about this, we have to ask why. And then they would even make it mandatory for people to, uh, you know, for your job. Why are they firing people that already had the um, Cerveza sickness? Why are we firing nurses for heaven's sakes? Why are we uh, not allowing people to cross a border, an arbitrary line in the sand, if they've already had the surveys? See, none of it made sense. Not that I favor uh, the medicine mandates for anybody, <laughs> regardless of whether or not. But my point is this aspect proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that the motives had nothing to do with health. So on that note, let's go to this recent article from SciTech uh, Sci Daily. And uh, the title is Scientific Breakthrough Against Cerveza Sickness. Antibodies identify that identified that may make the medicines completely unnecessary. So we'll go through some highlights here, but the gist of the article is that people that have natural immunity, their antibodies are so good that we can just extract those antibodies and inject them into another person. And that person even if they haven't had the Cerveza sickness, has no need for further boosters <laughs> at all. But what's really, really shocking about this article is to come to that conclusion, the one that I just outlined, you, you've got to actually do a little thinking and read between the lines. They never, ever admit that, oh, by the way, Looks like we were wrong. That natural immunity thing, yeah, that was actually pretty good. In fact, it was way better than the medicine. This is the conclusion they come to, but yet they can't say that. They can't admit it. You have to read between the lines, which again tells you everything you need to know about the people who are quote unquote pushing the science and pushing misinformation, like we said in the last video. Today's truth, in fact, is just yesterday's disinformation and misinformation. But they can't admit that, because then they get egg on their face, and then people start to question, the normies start to say, wait a minute, if you've been wrong this whole entire time, why was I listening to you? In fact, you were the one that was telling me not to do my own research. And if the average Joe and Jane wake up to this fact, as you can imagine, I think there would be hell to pay with the authoritarians and the central planners. Let's get into the t key talking points here. Tel Aviv University scientists have isolated two antibodies that neutralize all known strains, not just some, all known strains. <laughs> 
with 95% efficiency. The research is targeted treatment with antibodies and their delivery to the body in high concentrations may serve as an effective substitute for medicines, especially for at-risk people. By using antibody treatment, it is possible that they need to provide repeated, it is possible that they, that the need to provide, excuse me, a boosters for the entire population every time a new uh, scariant emergence is gone. So initially I was like, okay, well, maybe I'm, maybe I'm just not reading this right. Maybe there's, they're saying antibody treatment. Okay. Maybe that's not, that, that doesn't have anything to do with natural immunity. This is what I was thinking. I'm, I'm trying to be as skeptical uh, uh, as I possibly can, or, or really trying to, you know, poke holes in my preconceived notions. So as we go on the scientific breakthrough against Survey sickness, Tel Aviv. Okay, we got it. It demonstrates that antibodies. Now, now, here you go. This is where it starts to become crystal clear. So, let me just read this whole paragraph. A scientific breakthrough against the survey sickness has been realized by Tel Aviv University. A team of scientists from the university has demonstrated that antibodies isolated from the immune system of what? Recovered patients. So you see, throughout this whole article, they never reference natural immunity, but they have to say it that they recovered antibodies from the immune system of recovered patients. <laughs> they can't use the word natural immunity. Uh, are effective in neutralizing all known strains. This includes Delta and Omicron. This discovery may eliminate the need for repeated boosters and help strengthen people who whose immune systems are compromised. So it goes on here to just kind of describe what's going on. And the other uh, kind of the, the other uh, it's not a concern, but the other thing that I wanted to make sure of before I posted this article or talked about it was uh the fact that maybe they're talking about the antibodies derived from the uh, medicine itself. I mean, I know they state that clearly above here, but, uh, and maybe they're saying that the natural immunity is not that great because it fades after three months. So let's go down here and you'll see what I'm talking about. At the end of the article, they uh, discuss this in context of what we've dealt with in uh, throughout history. So we need to look at the survey sickness in the context of previous disease outbreaks that humankind has witnessed. People who are vaccinated against smallpox, now let, let's get this straight here, because we, we gotta read the next paragraph in the context of this paragraph, where it gets a little confusing. And again, you have to ask the question, why can't they just be forthright? Why can't they just come out and say it just directly so anybody can understand? Why do they have to tap dance around all of this like the World Economic Forum does? Anyway, we need to look at the survey sickness in the context of past disease outbreaks. Outbreaks, People who were had the medicine, people who had the medicine against smallpox at birth and today are 50 years old, still have antibodies. So they are probably protected, at least partially, from things like monkeypox that have recently that we've recently been hearing about. Okay, unfortunately, this is not the case with the survey sickness. For reasons we still don't fully understand, the level of antibodies against the survey sickness declines significantly after three months. You see, so you're kind of there. You're wondering, well, which antibodies are they talking about? Are they talking about Natural immunity, those antibodies? If so, maybe it's not that great, but no. If you read it in the context of this top paragraph and you look at what they say next, 
which is why we see people getting infected again and again, even after being medicated three times. So although they don't come outright and say it, if you look at it in the context of the paragraphs and the sentences that surround the statement, you would naturally come to the conclusion that the antibodies that are decreasing in efficacy after three months are not the ones derived from natural immunity, but the ones derived from the medicine itself. So like the title of the video said, this is something that most of you are like, duh, <laughs> pretty much obvious uh, since we're dealing with a, an immune system that's thousands or millions of years old. It's, it's not really a shocker uh, that it can do a better job at handling the cerveza sickness than the medicines that were whipped up after about three or four months. <laughs> but again, my point is now that the uh, medical community is having to admit this, uh, although they refuse to admit it directly, uh, it's, it's showing you once again that the yesterday's misinformation is today's truth and fact. Therefore, when we have the Davos types or the central planners, the authoritarians, trying to label anything they don't like as misinformation or disinformation and want to get that banned from the inter internet because it's just too dangerous for you to read. We need to understand that most likely the people who are arguing for censorship are the bad guys. Just like they have been throughout history. Guys, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. As always, make sure that you stand up for freedom, liberty, free market capitalism. See you in the next video.